Okay, welcome back to uh, Boston Messages. We're here live. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of HP Vertica's user conference. The hashtag is HP Big Data 2013. We're watching the Twitter stream. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. Deborah Ann Braun is here. She is the Director of Global Information Solutions at HP. She's an IT practitioner within HP's Information Technology Organization. Deborah Ann, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming Thank on. you. Thank you guys so much for having me today. So you were telling us off camera you've been pretty busy. Um, yes. All the partners and sales guys dragging you around actually asking you to talk about how you're implementing. So tell us what, yeah. you're, what you've been doing here the last few hours. Um, well, we started off with a presentation this morning talking about the Vertica partnership with ClickView and how mm. HP is using it in internally to deliver our executive dashboards for software. Um, and we had a, a lot of really good conversations about the not only the partnership between Vertica and ClickView, but also some of the impacts on the industry on uh, big data, and can I tell a story? Sure. I have a story, yeah. I have a story, this is great. So, in this, I told the story this morning in my presentation as well. I was coming down the elevator this morning and a lady was in the elevator with me and she noticed my badge and she goes, so what is this big data thing? I'm like, she kind of caught me off guard, I'm like, what? It's She's big. like, this, there's this big data thing, I'm like, I was like, oh, the, the Vertica conference. And she's like, yeah, can you tell me a little bit about it? And so I kind of give her like a 10 second overview. And just as the elevator doors open, she looks at me and she goes, so how big is big data? And I just like completely laughed to myself because that's the it's question big. of the hour. It's exactly, big. how it's big very, is very, very big, big data? Big. <laughs> And I, I asked her, I said, well, are you in IT? Do you, you know, do you know anything? She's like, no, but I mean, is it that important? Is big data that important? And I was so compelled to tell that this morning in the group that we were in because the concept of what big data was yeah. three, five years ago, people were afraid of petabytes. And today we look at Xenobyte and we're just like, ha ha ha, we'd laugh in the face of you know, big data. Um, the, the data that we're collecting and managing and using to help us understand our businesses better, uh, we don't look about it, at it in terms of how big is the data. We really focus on how do we answer the right questions and we need tools like Vertica to help us manage the process of getting to that data. And that's what is, I think, a really good sweet spot for Vertica. In my career in working in business intelligence and data warehousing, it's one of the strongest vendors I've seen come in a really long time that adds a new concept to data and managing data and analyzing data, so it was so exciting. Big, big data, big deal, you've seen yes. that before. And you know, the other thing too is that woman in the elevator, you probably could have given her a hundred examples where she's touched oh, big data. Right? absolutely. So w when you made that comment about Vertica from a practitioner's perspective, what is compelling and alluring about the technology, the architecture, what is it about the software that um, that, that's a great question, and as a matter of fact, I just got out of a session. I was in a session where they were talking about expanded analytic capabilities within Vertica today. And I think, to me, that's, as an actual user of the product, and I look to uh, Vertica to really continue to expand its suite, it's the ability that they have to integrate analytics within the Vertica platform. I think that that's very important versus having to go outside looking at an analytic engine provider within Vertica itself, we have the ability to use embedded capability to drive analytic solutions. And I was very excited to hear about the extensions that they talked about today in some of our sessions because it's going to further take that capability a, a lot faster down the road. And the competitors, with all due respect, are great competitors of Vertica, but I don't see them focusing on that analytic space, which is what makes Vertica, I think, very unique. So add some color to that, if you would, Deborah. So when, when you talk about the analytics, you're talking about statistical capabilities, uh, obviously you're partnering with a lot of the visualization. Can you just add some detail there? Absolutely, so we're talking about definitely doing a lot of predictive analytics where we're looking to identify, based on historic information, where are we going? Um, we are also looking at some functions that help us parse through data faster and make smarter decisions based on the results of information that we see. So it's a, really a combination of 
prediction and aligning the data, and then the statistical analysis is just amazing, the things that you can do, the formulas that you can derive information from. Out of the box. Out of the box. Debra, and talk about the customers here, because one of the things we're really impressed by is the, is the heavyweight type players here, the no lightweights here, as yeah. we said earlier on theCUBE. Um, and sometimes when you see these conferences, they, you know, they cobble together some customers, you know, buy them some free airline tickets, get them to the game, and you know, it's, they kind <laughs> of parade. Some of those. They kind of, <laughs> they kind of, they kind of parade around. But you know, we talk, and we see, and there's some, there's some hot shots here. Little they're all pioneering in emerging areas where big data is competitive advantage. Um, what do you see in that regard, and how is that infiltrating into the, the folks that are now crossing the chasm, because those pioneers right. are setting the stage, are setting the agenda, um, and they're working with Vertica, and all kinds of new BI use cases are emerging, as well as on the data warehouse side. So talk about that dynamic, the pioneers, you know, from web scale to large, pushing the envelope companies and, and the enterprise to the followers now that are going to come on board and, and, and cross the chasm. Sure, and I, and I think I can touch on a lot of that. I sat in a panel today with some folks from GE, so talk about foundation, you know, we have a company like GE who has been around forever and they are using analytics to help them understand better consumers' usage of power and energy and how they can improve on that. And what was so intriguing is the gentleman who was sitting on the panel with me from GE, he was just, he knew from start to finish, he talked about the leverage that GE is taking using Hadoop as a data lake for collecting and managing data through how they're taking device data and um, actually analyzing the device data to truly understand how they can improve their products mm. proactively for consumers. So uh, it's real world what we see a large company, a partner of HP doing. Yeah. To um, I, I spoke to some some smaller companies that are really partners with HP as well and had some really good conversations where they're new to Vertica, um, they've worked with HP for years, but they're, they want to start serving our mid-level customers as partners by supporting Vertica, but there hasn't been a lot of information to them on, you know, we don't use it internally, so we don't know how to sell and manage it, but we have customers who say, you know what, I have a need to do some of this really cool analytic stuff that everyone is talking about, but not to the scale of what a large customer might be doing. And I think in two or three conversations that I had today, there's a relative gap that you can see where companies who can invest tens of millions of dollars to truly go down a path of an architecture and development and analytics, you've got your kind of mid-level companies out there going, you know, I only maybe have a million to a million two to spend, how do I get in on this? And Vertica's perfect for them because Vertica serves all. So again, it was interesting how I've got some really huge top players who are, I'll just, I'm just throwing money at this, to guys who really want to get into the space who now can as a result of what HP supports. Well, well also there's some technical um, folks who are really intrigued by them, what, yeah. what you guys are enabling. We talked to one uh, practitioner, obviously we're exclusive here and part of that we can't talk about some of the big <laughs> scoops that we we're getting. And we're getting many here, <laughs> believe me, as soon as the embargo's lifted, <laughs> we'll be blocking like crazy. Got a lot of the inside data. No, but seriously, that one guy's like, look at Vertica solves a huge problem. The, the way they cluster, that is a massive yes. enablement. The speed issue goes away. Mm -hmm. I can now build software on the BI side from scratch and throw away the legacy constraints involved in BI. Right. Now that, that's a tech dude, that's an engineer, that's a developer, yeah. that's yeah. not an analyst. Right. So that's interesting, right? You're seeing the, the, the programmers say, hey, I love the vertical clusters, I love how it scales and the speed. That's yeah, an interesting dynamic. Absolutely, and, and I, I myself maintain hands-on with technology because I think it's the only way I can actually talk about it with some level of truth. I do it. If I don't do it, I can't talk about it. And um, today, <laughs> they brought up a, a, one of the slides and it was just like all of these SQL functions and they're talking through what these functions do and I had all it? these, oh. well no, I was like, oh no, this is over my head, I think. But all the guys <laughs> around me, their arms were up and they're like, ooh, 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 I want to, can I ask a question about that? So how does that function integrate properly into SQL? Do I call it from a SQL command and just, pass that information in, and it was so great to see the level of excitement. And I, a statistic I will give to you that you may not have heard from other people is um, I participated in all of the three level of tracks today, and I will tell you that I would, I guarantee you that I would say 40% of the people 
that were committed in those tracks were in the tech tracks. And I would say over 60% of the total track population this afternoon has been in the tech tracks. It's in which track? Um, in the tech track, so the technology tracks, because we got the yeah. ecosystem. And the business. And, and everybody, I mean, the room was standing room only this afternoon. I turned around and I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, this is impressive. And there's about 200 seats yeah. in that one room. Yeah. So that leads me to another question. So you, t you mentioned the term data lake, by the way. I have to say, John, first, that the lake is too small. It's a data ocean. So, uh, <laughs> and, and people- I hate the data lake. I, I call it the data it. nebulous. Yeah, 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 right, <laughs> no, the universe. The data world. So, so, so Guest genes has announced that they're going to have, you know, computers on the guest genes. We brought that up to, no, I'm only kidding. So there's uh, <laughs> so this, 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 this- We had the guest guy on earlier. Just, uh, yeah, Where is that guy? Sensor network. Yeah. There's a sensor <laughs> network going on there. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> So there's this meme of big data. You talk to the lady in the elevator. Everybody's going crazy about it. And, and, and it seems to be largely led by technology mm -hmm. uh, in many cases in many organizations. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is, you've been around data your entire career. You were CIO. You were a consultant around data, data warehouse expert, database expert. How has this big data meme theme changed the way in which organizations are thinking about big data? Who's, who owns the data strategy? Um, and is it... Is there a risk that it's largely technology driven, to your point about these tracks or you know, a lot of technology buzz mm -hmm, going on, mm -hmm. are we at risk of making some mistakes by not looking at the broader picture? What do you see as organizations or what would you advise, putting your consultant hat, that organizations should do with regard to their data strategy? Should there be a data czar? Should that individual report into IT? I mean, talk about that a little bit. That's, ooh, I'm going to have to give you my personal opinion on this one. Yeah, fair enough. I'm going okay, out on a limb. Um, and I think a lot of people would agree with what I'm about to say. For years in the data industry, we've been talking about ensuring that you have business partners and that the business is who is driving your data strategy, mm -hmm. not IT. No IT projects. Right, business I'm projects. in IT, so yeah. that's almost like heresy yeah. for me to say that, right? And, and I know that we have the ability to influence the business in a positive way down that data road. But I firmly believe that, I've always believed that the, the business themselves must own the strategy and drive the strategy for it to be successful. Because then you're, you're always working uphill to get them to want to be a part of it and to participate as wholly and completely as they have to. So I think even as we move forward, technology wows us. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw that picture you popped up. Yeah, that's you. you why uh, that are, why are your me. tweets protected? Um, you know. I just followed you on Twitter. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I, well we can't. Smart. I don't know if we're allowed to go into my social media <laughs> choices, but. You didn't, you're not, are, you, choice, whatever. are you media trained? No, okay. no, I okay. just, I have, I'm a very private person, and I'm here doing You this. sure do great talking, and we love you. I love you. You're a cube, cube legend at this point. I'm <laughs> loving it. Am I getting yeah. any good tweets out of this? Yeah. Right? How's oh, it yeah. going? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, uh, I think if we were, if we do it right, and as HP, we like to think of ourselves as doing it right, I will be selfish and say that in George Kadipa, we have one of the best business executives I have come across in my years. I've never seen someone as committed, nor his leadership as committed to getting it right by partnering with IT. We also have a very strong IT group within HP with very strong IT ideas and ideals. And I do see that the work we're doing today is driving a, a strategy together. And I don't know if that's possible for everyone. I don't know if, you know, some, some business they're like, what? why do I care about data? And their IT group is like, no, oh, because you're asking me constantly for information. Um, so I don't think there's a one size fits all, but I do believe that we're on the right path of having a governance and ownership from a data stewardship standpoint from within the business and an IT organization that will help elevate the strategy as well as making sure that where the business falls short, potentially in the, what we think needs to happen in the vision of the future, we're picking that up and saying, hey, but let's do this also and let's add this in there. It's, it's strongly the combination that makes us successful. Well, and, and coming out of the, you know, the decade of the you know, late 90s, early 2000s, there was a lot of finger pointing at IT. Does IT matter? There's right. a lot of you know, cutting to the bone. Uh, and, and, and a lot of people were down on IT, and it, and it feels like, I wonder if you could comment on this, that the data is bringing a renaissance to the, right. to the technology business, because what you just described with George Kadifa, a business head aligning with, with, with IT in a pretty proactive way, yes. those, were, those stories were few and far between, but you're hearing, seems anyway, more and more. Do you see that you know, outside your organization? 
in, um, I would say here, in the business customers that we have here, I'm seeing that. Um, I also went to our HP Discover event mm -hmm. in June and had the opportunity to meet with some customers as well, met some really great customers. And I, th I think I'm seeing that. And maybe that has something to do with how we ourselves consume so much data every day. I mean, you guys are all over yeah. the web all the time. I mean, we all do it, right? Yeah. And so I think people now get it a little bit more about data and why it's so important because they're actually participating in the creation of data that's being used to benefit them. I don't think people really understood before. I mean, marketing was marketing. You saw something on TV, it looked good, you buy it, right? But now, the information that we're gathering from people, we're actually using it to make their lives better and being proactive. I don't know about you guys, but I think one of my favorite things in the world is to walk in a store and first of all, they recognize me, but they also, have done such a good job of profiling what I do that they're like, actually we have some suggestions for you today. Why don't you come over here and look at this? And right. because of that, and people see the power and the strength of that, that in their own lives is better, they bring it into their company and say, you know what, that same thing that I got, I want my customers to have. And anytime you get that sense of ownership, I think your perspective changes. Yeah, and then replicating that in a digital footprint, that's one of the things yes. we, we were talking to Bruce at Guess about is, you know, how yeah. do you create that metaphor online? Yeah, absolutely. And, then that, and the answer is data. Yeah, or, or you could just make jeans a size bigger and, but, and label them a size yeah, smaller uh, uh, and all the women out there would love that. Great idea, <laughs> you know, we should That's do that. That's all mine, uh, yes yeah. people, yeah. all mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome, all right, so what's next for you? You uh, it sounds like you travel around a lot and a uh, good spokesperson yeah. for HP. Um, love HP, I'm an HP fan. Um, we have uh, we have a lot of programs going on right now within the organization that we're doing to help benefit and provide more information so we can help our customers. Some, unfortunately, some exciting things I can't talk about either. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, <laughs> but also, I have an opportunity very soon to take our message out to some of our folks in India and in Guadalajara and share with them some of the strategy and help them to understand because I... I have a personal belief that everybody has a vested interest in what we do. And you can't just point to someone and say, well, go write this code or go do this. We're all about making sure that everyone has an opportunity to truly understand the strategy of it, no matter what role they play, and also having them give feedback. Because information is so available nowadays, you know, you have people in other parts of the world who you don't communicate with on a day-to-day -day basis who may have a really great idea that you just haven't thought of yet. And so I'm also going to try to take some time to start learning from others as well who are dabbling in some of these new technologies. Because, I mean, if, if I were to be completely honest, I think we're kind of reaching that funnel point again in technology where so much new technology has been recently introduced with Hadoop and the overwhelming prospects of what Hadoop provides and then all of the things around it. And you've got uh, other, I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about Microsoft and other companies. <laughs> sure, why not? But we have, um, you know, we have uh, large companies who are like starting to recognize that, hey, maybe we need to get in that space too. We need to play a role. Um, that I think things are going to be stagnant for a while while we all get our arms around this. And my vision has always been when everyone gets stagnant, that's when I get creative. Yeah, so you're right. There's a lot of disruption coming on, and a lot, and a lot of the disruption is the, you know, the, the economics of the new stuff. Right is so much right. different than, than the old stuff. There's that transition going on. Right. And, and that's a great opportunity for, for innovation, isn't it? Yes, it absolutely is. So what about advice to young people looking to get into the data, data business, however we define that, trying to get into the data ocean? What would you advise the um, kids in college, kids coming out of college? Stay in school. About going? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eat your spinach. <laughs> <laughs> Study data science. <laughs> Math. Actually, I w I, and, and that's what I was going to say, is this whole new cool, funky role called a data scientist. First of all, it shouldn't necessarily be envisioned as some guy sitting around you know, with glasses and his little you know, notepad and his pocket and pens. This is, this is actually a really glamorous role, I think. I think it's something that we should aspire for, is to, to be someone who's a reputable expert on data, I think is sexy, and I think that it's a much needed asset, mm. instead of, Today, we're, we, we go out there and we use the term, I want to hire a data scientist. We all know what that means in the technology community, but how many are really out there? And so, uh, uh, long term, there's going to be so much data that we're gathering and storing 
and because we all believe you don't get rid of a single piece of data, that who's going to go through it? So I think I'm, I feel like there's going to be a really solid revival in what we call data analysts. What a data analyst was and what they are today are two different things. So I think that that's a really good space for people to go from like a college intern opportunity into a data scientist role. The data scientist will become like the DBA of the past. Yeah, I mean Hal Varian's comment about you know data scientists being the sexy job, and and yep, and, yep. and of course. Uh, we were at MIT a few weeks ago, and Mike Rappa, who's a professor at North Carolina State, they, they run actually probably the premier data science uh, uh, tra uh, training and education curriculum in the country, and he was saying that his students coming out of college make 150,000 to 200, yeah. you know, right out of the bat, so it is lucrative as well. Yes, it is a very lucrative position, right. and if anyone's looking, <laughs> well, Deborah, great to have you on theCUBE. Really appreciate uh, you. your you. comments and your predictions and your uh, bold Thank statements you. and also great knowledge. Thanks for sharing. Thank right. you guys. This is Silicon Angle. We'll keep on the Cube. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is two days of exclusive wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage of the HP Big Data 2013, the Vertical User Conference. A lot of great stuff here, more use cases, more customer stories, more technology discussions here inside the Cube. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>